Hello, Spatial Data Discovery. Professor Davis here, and I'm introducing our raster data model and the plain text file format that goes with it, the ASCII raster file. All right, so first let's think about what is the raster data model. Last week we looked into the vector data model. This one we're looking into matrices of values or grids of cells. If you have ever gone out and snapped a picture with your phone, you have taken a raster file. Typically a raster file is broken up into a regular grid of cells. Each cell can have one value. So we have numbers that go into each one of our cells and those values then represent something, whether it's a measurement or categorical data, whatever it is. In a photograph, it's the quantity of, sort of red or green or blue light. So we now have this regular grid of cells when we're trying to place this in space. So each cell is gonna have a size. So we think of the size in X. These are our columns. X is like the measurement then east or west, sort of left or right. So you can think of that sort of in terms of longitude. And then if we have the height of each of these cells, again, thinking of it in terms of the Y axis, the height then can be a measurement of the north or south or up or down like latitude. So then we have the height and the width of each of our cells. Uh, then we have our grid that we need to then say how many of these cells do we have. We said that we have rows, so the rows coming down from the top, and we have columns. So if we have rows and columns, in order to define that, we have our n rows, or number of rows, and calls for number of columns. If we want to know where this is in space, then as long as this is a known regular grid of cells, if we can identify the location of just one, then the location of all the rest will be defined for us because we know where they are in relationship to one another. So we have to point out where the first or where one of the origin cells is located. And in terms of the file format, we're just going to be looking at the lower left corner or the lower left center. And so we want to be able to say, is it the lower left corner? So right where the edge on the left hand side of the X and right where the bottom edge of the Y is located, that would be our X lower left corner, Y lower left corner. Or, Alternatively, one of the more common ways of identifying it is right in the center of that bottom lower left cell. So in the centroid or center location of the X and the center of the lower left Y. And if we gave that a coordinate, a location in space, then the location of all the other ones can be defined by knowing the number of rows and columns and also the cell size. How big is it in X and Y? And the way that this file format works is that the X and the Y are the same. So we're not just looking at a grid of cells, but they're a grid of squares. All right, then what happens when we map out these values? We said that the, the numeric values and rasters have to store numbers. What if we only wanted to show a feature that sort of looked like this in a raster format? Well, we would be able to color in this area and give those numbers a quantity, but we have to have a full grid, a regular grid of cells. So then what do we give the values that where there's nothing inside? We still want to be able to map out or show this as a raster format. Well, there comes in the no data value. So we can assign some numeric value, maybe zero, maybe zero is not good, maybe negative 999, something that you would maybe never see in your measurements or your values. And that way that when you do your analysis, you can filter out all of the non-essential or no data values easily. Typically, these values are stored as integers, but they can be stored in floating point. 
So pick a value that works. Now we have a regular grid of cells, so how do these then translate into a plain text format? Well, we have the necessary header that you have to give with the all caps, end rows, end calls, choosing either the XLL center or XLL corner, same for the Y. The cell size, again, in terms of the units, if we're doing this in space, this would be how many degrees wide and how many degrees tall. The no data value would be the quantity that we want to assign null or nothing to. And then below that is where we actually type out the values that are associated with the matrix. Remember to put a space in between each of the values because we're going to programmatically look at splitting these on the space. And remember to hit the enter or the new line at the very end so that we basically create in a plain text what our raster model is supposed to look like in terms of uh, a matrix. We could have something that is multi-band. So if you have taken a picture with your phone, you'll see a color image and not a grayscale image. So why do we see color? That's because you have actually three bands of the raster data laid right on top of each other. They have to have the same number of rows, the same number of columns, but the quantities inside the cell can be different which is why if we have one for red, one for green, and one for blue, we match them all up. The computer can then match those three colors to give you any color than in the rainbow, which is how we get our color images. How do we translate multiband into plain text raster? We have n rows and n columns defined, so it knows exactly how big this data set is supposed to be. If we were to then duplicate this underneath here, that would be band two. So we'd have band one and band two. So you can make multi-band rasters in ASCII raster format. ASCII raster formats are plain text, so they can be without a file extension, .txt, or more traditionally, .asc. So your job for this new sandbox challenge is to create a plain text file in ASCII raster format to represent whatever you want in space. And what we'll do is we'll take a look at them next week to see how they turned out. Now remember, your cell size and your XLL, YLL center will really be the defining factors in where and how this will be mapped out over the earth. So remember, you want a location here and then you want your size for this. Remember, the Earth is divided up into 360 degrees with plus or minus 180 east and west and 180 degrees tall, plus or minus 90 degrees north and south. So whenever you're looking at your numbers in terms of your center or corner and your cell size times your n rows and n calls, you don't want to go beyond the map, so to speak. All right, but you can play around with the values however you want. Submit them into our repository on GitHub, tag the issue, and we'll take a look at them next week. All right, this is the raster data model and the ASCII raster file format. I will see you next time.